Hey, um, hi. <laughs> uh, that was, it was, I looked up and it said five o'clock. I was like, oh crap, it's five o'clock. So um, here I am. I have so many things to talk about today. And I was, I was like, I should keep things, I should try not to have hour long weekly <laughs> lives. I should do like half hour. And then I made a list and there's a lot on it. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. So um, I'm going to open my mail. Isn't that exciting? Okay. Hi, 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 Sarah. Hi, Diane. It's, how are you? Okay. Bills. No fun. Um, so, uh, I don't know, February? Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Okay, that I need. So, um, a number of years ago, no, not a number of years ago, a number of months ago. Hey, Fran, I thought so too. Hi, Debbie. Um, like in, I want to say it was, no, it was, I think it was February or late January. All of a sudden in the mail, I got a um, Vogue magazine, not Vogue knitting. I'm doing well. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> um, I got a Vogue, a Vogue magazine, like not Vogue knitting, but Vogue. And it was the November issue, I think, which had Sarah Jessica Parker on the cover. And it said, SJP is back. And SJP, that's me. I'm Sarah Jean Peasley. So, and I didn't order Vogue knit. I don't get Vogue magazine. I don't get any magazines. And I was confused. And I don't know who sent it to me. And I thought it was weird. But I thought it was because the cover said SJP is back. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm for it. And then I got like a couple weeks later, I got the December issue. And then a couple weeks later, I got the January issue and it had my name on it. It has my name on it. Can you see that? It says Sarah Peasley and it's spelled correctly and it doesn't use my middle name. Like there could have been clues. <laughs> if there had been a middle name, I would have known who had done it. Maybe. Um, I don't know who did it. And then, in, and then I got the February. I, anyway, I got it. Then I got like, so I was getting them like a week or two apart until it got caught up to the current month. And I've been getting them ever since. And I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I thought something cool happened with the SJP one and somebody just sent it to me, but now I'm, I seem to be subscribed. So I just got one today in the mail. So it'll go in the pile downstairs where someday I'm going to actually read my magazines, but isn't that weird? I just back in the day, when I had my first ever real job, that's not really true. When I had my um, first ever real corporate job, my only ever real corporate job. Is that true? Um, shortly after I got hired in, there was a strike. And my job as a programmer was, for some reason, in the union, 724 UAW. Thank you very much. UAW 724. Oops. And um, there was a strike. But it it really had to do with stuff that I didn't there. Were, anyway, the programmers didn't want to have the strike, but it was a clerical union that we were part of for some reason. And um, so there was a strike, but we went to work and the union people thought it would be meaningful for them to subscribe us to all kinds of magazines. So they subscribed all the people who crossed the line to all kinds of magazines. <laughs> Ooh, so, um, and, and the names were like, I, I think they didn't know our middle initials or they spelled our names wrong or something. So it was just kind of like, fine, be that way. Which is what I was referring to. Like if it was the wrong name, but it's probably still not the strike guys, the union guys. Anyway, a little story from my background. Um, so I have so many things to talk to you about. Um, Accountability. So Starsky sweater, I am right where I was last time, which is where I think my armpit goes. 
and I've checked in with my students and they are all there or very close. And so I today sent an email and said, how about let's schedule the next session? So I've, I, well, I have to tell them, I guess. Let's write that down. <laughs> um, I've decided when it is. And so I need to tell them. Okay. Just writing stuff down. Um, so I've told, so I need to tell them that it's going to be April 10th. And um, I think was the date. And then we can move on. Woo, finally. And and so that's just been sitting there. And the other one I was working on was Talamina, which is the blue, the beautiful blue lace, oh, mid-row, beautiful blue lace shawl, which I always hold up on my forehead. You can see it better. And I'm in the border. So starting right, right here, you can see that point. From there up is border, and it looks like I've done. Oh, I'm on, I'm on row seven of eighteen. Um, so you know, almost halfway done. Is it eighteen? Come on. Oh, that's how I have to do it. Uh, am I the only one who has trouble going back and forth between electronic devices and like you try to scroll with your finger on your desktop, for example, which doesn't do that? Is that it? At it. There it is. Uh, so I'm starting row seven out of 18. Yep. So um, the end is in sight. They do keep getting longer. And I have this much yarn left. And last week here, I had calculated that I had gone too far with the repeat repeats. And so um, that night or the next day, I tore back and I did a time-lapse video of me tearing back because it took forever but I thought it was really cool to see to I thought it might be interesting to watch and what I learned was that I already had found out that that iPhone which I love um doesn't have any setting it has a time-lapse setting and that's it um so that's all you can do is that one frames per whatever setting and then and so I understood that. I got that. I figured that out. Or I didn't figure it out, but I understood that that was a thing. So I, I, um, it took me an hour and a half ish. I don't even know really. And I went through, um, but did I tell you, I, so I wanted to tear out the eight rows that I'd started into the border to go back to the beginning of the lace pattern, um, so that I could, nope, nope. I had already, okay. I got it. I'd already torn out the border. I needed to tear back eight rows. So I wanted to put a needle in the top of the previous repeat so I could tear down to the previous repeat without unknitting every one of these stitches because there's a lot of stitches there. Okay, so I um, have a video of me putting the needle through like on top of the previous row of um, lace uh, repeat. And then, um, and then I took the top needle out and took all the markers out. And then I, it was on the needle, but I wasn't always on the exact right row. So I took the, uh, the two ends of the needle and just scooch, 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 scooched all the way across to make sure everything was okay. And when I got to the end, I stopped the video and the time-lapse video that I was taking and played it. And it was 21 seconds <laughs> or 28 seconds. It was very short and it, it, you couldn't, hi Nicole, and you couldn't really see anything like it was, like it was, I don't know, going too fast. Anyway, I did more of the Googling and it turns out that on the iPhone, the longer you record in time-lapse mode, the more it cuts out and it doesn't just like make a copy with some frames, it deletes a percentage of the frame. So the longer the video, the more it cuts out. So I don't actually have that video that I shot of me working for an hour and a half on my shawl. I have a 21 second or 28 second version that you can't even tell what's going on. So I was very sad to find that out. <laughs> so um, I thought I'd conquered time-lapse and I have not in fact conquered time-lapse. So I will be figuring that out. Um, I'll have to research that. And I also want to research picture in picture so that instead of just looking at me the whole time, 
I can have my face up here and I can, you can watch me like doing something more interesting than just looking at you. So, um, I mean, Diane, Diane says, Oh no, how sad I could tear it out again, <laughs> but I have no reason to, and I'm not going to do that. That was a long involved process and it's forward progress now. So let's just keep that going. And theoretically I won't lose at yarn chicken. Fingers crossed on that. So those were my two projects that I was being very um, loyal to. And then um, I will I will confess right now that I started uh, something else. Um, the woven art. So this is the part where I'm accountable to you for all my projects. And there's supposed to be two. <laughs> and there are, in fact, more than two. So uh, I host a knit along, a zoom along, a whatever along at Woven Art Yarn Shop on Wednesdays from 12 to 1. And every month we have a theme, which can be interpreted loosely. You can work on whatever the hell you want, but we pretend there's a theme. Um, and I uh, last Wednesday I asked my crew, what do you want to have be the theme for um, next month, for April? And some, the first person said rainy day knits, because, you know, April. And the second person said warm weather teas because they had a bunch of teas lined up that they wanted to knit. And it was agreed that um, warm weather teas would be the theme. And I was like, okay, warm weather teas it is. And then I was like, I don't, I don't have any warm weather teas on the needles. <laughs> so, um, but last year at some point I had purchased yarn to make the rocket tea. Um, which I'll look up really fast. Um, maybe, or maybe slow. Well, it's right. It's on this. I can do it on this. Whoops. Um, I'll find it. Because <laughs> it's already open there. And so let me find the picture there. Okay. So let's take this off. Ugh. Whoops. Okay. The rocket tea. There we go. So it's um, whoop, fingering weight um, yarn. So sock weight alternating with just plain mohair and silk lace weight. So it's stripes of the two different fibers. Ooh. And um, I bought the yarn for it last year and, you know, probably started to swatch for it and didn't get very far. So technically it's stash yarn. <laughs> And I started, so I swatched for it. So um, I had purchased some yarn from, <gasps> look how pretty. I had purchased some yarn from Dana of um, Supernova Dye Works, which used to be called Ice Melon Stash. I had, oh, there it is. Um, which I didn't get at Woven Art, but she's a local Lansing dyer. Oops. And um, it's, this is Oculus Sock. It's 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Nylon. And it's 410 yards, 100 grams. So this is Sock weight, plus it's called Sock. And the color name is, I like turtles, which cracks me up. Um, and it's, you know, it's not my typical color, but I thought that I could... I thought that I could wear that. I think it'll be pretty. And then to go with it, um, I had trouble. She sells um, a matching mohair. Uh, it's the brushed, the brushed Surrey alpaca, and it, but it's a DK weight instead of the lace weight that the pattern calls. For. I'm pointing there where the pattern is. So instead, I got. Um, you know, I think the label's downstairs, but it's Yoshi and Lucy, um, silk and mohair, the same kind of thing as um, Kids LK, same blend. Um, but it's dyed by Yoshi and Lucy, and the color is called Oceanic, which to me goes with I like turtles. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know, it's kind of darker, but it's pretty. Um, the shiny part's the silk, the fuzzy part's the mohair. And I, so I, anyway, I swatched it this weekend and it's beautiful. So that's what I'm going with. 
and another choice I could have used was, um, excuse me, I have a lot of green um, Kitzel Ks. I have three plus a little pile. Notice that they're all slightly different colors. <laughs> like this one's bright, brighter and this one's lighter and these two are darker. See that? Or maybe it's coming across as all the same, but like you can, I don't know. So this is the prettiest one, but um, so I have plenty and I have two of these. So that's plenty. So I have plenty. And, um, but I swatched with this and it was so pretty and I, but I wondered what this would look like. So I actually started the sweater and I started it with this and this. And it, it just doesn't work. This is a like a blue green and this is like a very yellow green and it just didn't look right. So I started, you know, I did the swatch in this and then like a good girl, I didn't use these yarns for the, <laughs> for the sweater. I used this and the, and the this and I didn't like it. So then I tore it out and I started, it's so pretty. And I started it again. And here it is. <laughs> so I'm working my way down. Um, it's top down. And I, you know, I'm this far. I'm trying to get to a place so that on when is Wednesday, April? No. So next Wednesday, I'll be in a place where I can just sit and knit along with the Zoom along and not have to pay attention. Um, right now, I'm having trouble seeing the lace weight as I'm knitting it because I'm wearing my computer glasses. But I also just found a mistake that I'm going to have to go fix. And I would fix it now. Yeah, so Fran says she never would have picked the darker green, but it does look really good. So I I don't think it's a green. I think it's like a blue-gray. I mean, look at it when you just see the fuzz. It's very blue-gray. I don't know that I'd call it a green. But yeah, it does. I mean, and it looks kind of eh here. But that's why we make a swatch, because it looks so pretty. But yeah, it's totally the wrong green for that. Um, I was afraid it would just be too bright in general, but um, with the green... Oh, so I have enough of this because I have two of these and I only need barely more than one. I would have had enough of this, but I'm not using it after all. I don't have enough of this <laughs> because guess what? When I bought it last year, I was not, a, I was a different size. So last night I once again got the tape measure and measured and I'm like two sizes bigger in the pattern now. So this is not enough yarn. <laughs> Um, and I was like, that can't be right. I can't be two sizes bigger. And I measured again and I looked at the pattern and, you know, it, it asks for a bunch of ease. It asks for six inches of positive. It doesn't ask for, it says that it's shown with about six inches of positive ease, which is fine. The problem is I need to get it over my bust and then I was going to need to get it over my hips, but if I don't have enough yarn, it's going to be a little bit of a cropped sweater. It's a good thing it's top down. Um, and I thought, well, so maybe I'll buy more yarn because, <laughs> you know, I hear that's a thing. So I looked online. I mean, I bought this at Woven Art, by the way, where I work. So yay me. We don't have any more of this. I went on Ravelry. Ravelry doesn't even list this color. And I thought, well, that's not a good sign. Did I look on Ravelry first? No, I looked online like where to buy Yoshi and Lucy, which is what this is, Rosa, which is the kind of yarn it is. And I found a couple spots and none of them had this color or mentioned it. And then I went to Ravelry and they don't even mention it. So I'm pretty sure it's discontinued, um, but it's not even like normally, anyway, whoops. <laughs> so I'm just starting it. I'm already playing yarn chicken and I'm only that far. Um, but there you go. I started a third thing and oops, that's the wrong bag. And in the meantime, I figured out my um, Talamina shawl, the blue shawl. So I can work on that some more. And it's, you know, I will try to work on that some more because it's only, the heck, oh my gosh, things are happening. This ball goes under that strap. Does it? Yep. Under that strap. And then up here, and then in the bag. What was I just saying? Mm 
words. Uh, I don't know. There were words I'll remember later when I watch this again. So the mistake I found, if I can do, show you without pulling it off of the needles, and yes, I'm going to fix it, is um, <laughs> not there. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. So normally, so this is yarn over, knit one, yarn over. And I can't see it though. And normally, um, you know, the yarn over parts and then you purl back. So they get these little pairs of crossed stitches. And then we get to this guy and he has a different kind of cross stitch because that lighter color never got knitted. It's just carried across. So I'm going to drop that stitch down and ladder it back up, which shouldn't be hard actually. I was thinking it would be hard because of the yarn overs, but yeah, but I'm still knitting because I don't have the right size crochet hook unless I get off of my rear end. The mohair. What is the name of that yarn again? The mohair. It's Yoshi and Lucy. I'll put it in the, you know, my exciting notes. Yoshi and Lucy Rosa is the mohair and silk one. And then the color is called Oceanic. Are you going to do the Google for me, Fran? <laughs> Um, and the, the dye lot wouldn't matter because it's between the stripes. Um, but yeah, I'm like 90 yards short or something. I don't know. Let's see what I am. It wants 495 yards of each. Oh, I lost the, the I don't know where the label is. I think it's downstairs. Um, yeah, so that's fun. So that's three. And then um, three projects. That'll look really nice. And I might, I, well, I wanted to do longer sleeves, but not if I don't have enough yarn to even do the body. I'm just going to admire that. <laughs> it's also very soft. Did I mention cashmere? You know, I thought about that too, and I have all this, but this just isn't the right color. I have some silvery. I have some silvery. All right. That's a good idea. A random stripe or two of a different color. I'm already in the second. <laughs> Thank you for helping me figure things out. This is why today's going to take so long. I'm already in the second mouth hair stripe. And no, I don't want to tear it out, even though it's only that much. Um, I do have some silvery mohair. hair. I do. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I Yeah, because I thought about like one green one or whatever I needed to stretch it out. But okay. So that's that project. So now I'm up to three of my two that I'm being loyal to. And then, was it yesterday? No, two days ago, in my Patreon account, we did a Zoom along for my Cafe Mocha people. Um, and by the end, we're doing a project along. So that's project number four. <laughs> I, I want to come I want to claim innocence on that one but you know I have to knit along right so that one's gonna be a <laughs> and you know I'm so close to being done with the Talamina shawl um that one's gonna be anything so the parameters for that are stripe no not stripes what the hell Sarah mosaic anything mosaic yeah that could be crocheted too so mosaic is like a slip stitch pattern and stash yarn we're supposed to be using stash yarn because wouldn't that be nice? Rosa doesn't seem to be mohair. It's mohair and silk. Do I have the wrong name? Mercedes. Try Mercedes. Ran. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of them there. One of them there, Yoshi and Lucy's. And it's weird because they don't have a shop. They have a Facebook page and an Etsy shop. I mean, so that's a shop technically, but like they don't have a website. That's what I'm trying to say. Like a Yoshi and Lucy website. They being a woman named Denise. Okay. So I went in my stash. Um, the shawl that I want to make is called, um, do I have that one open? No. Is it on here? No. Um, 
is called, I don't have my keyboard. Mid, oh, let's go to Ravelry first. Let's do that. Ravelry. What the hell is that? Sign in. Oh, I have to sign in. Oh, touch ID. Let me in. Woo, okay. Um, patterns. <laughs> oh, it is Rosa, okay. I do get the Yoshi and Lucy's mixed up. Um, midnight. So um, one person had already done, she wasn't even in the knit along, but she's already done the um, pressed flowers shawl, which is a really pretty um, midnight in. <laughs> Pay attention, Sarah. It's a pretty shawl done in mosaic knitting. And um, another one had done one that I can't remember the name of midnight the midnight hour or something uh, shawl. But then Fran mentioned this midnight in Berlin shawl, which is really pretty by Melanie Berg, who a lot of us have heard of. So it's pretty simple because it's just garter stitch on the one side um, and then a little simple mosaic pattern for the other part. And it's a big long, you started a little triangle and I don't even know what happens. Um, but that looked really pretty and that calls for sport weight yarn. So I was um, looking in my stash for sport weight yarn and you know, it's a shawl, you can do whatever you want. And I, I wasn't, I found um, county uh, yarn <laughs> that's wool and it would be perfect, but I didn't have enough because why would I? Anyway, deep, deep, deep stash dive, old stash. This is from Blackberry Ridge um, and it's just, it, which is for sale. Will somebody please buy Blackberry Ridge um, and save them? It's been for sale for a really long time. It's in Wisconsin. Does it say where in Wisconsin? Mount Horeb. Um, go buy it now. Sport weight two ply sport silk blend. 25% silk and 75% wool. And it's like a, it's like a, um, I forgot that I can't get focus on this silly thing. It's like a, um, the raw silk, the slubby matte kind of finish silk instead of the shiny silk. I don't know. It's really pretty though. And it's like this purpley, it's blue, but it has like a kind of a violet tint to it. And it's really pretty. And I have enough because I have two of these, but then I need something to go with it for the contrasts. And the first idea I came up with because I don't have a lot in sport and DK would work too, but apparently I don't have a lot in DK either. But the first thing I found was my pile of crazy melons. And I kind of thought that those would look really pretty. And I still think that those might look really pretty. They all kind of have kind of a, I don't know, contrasty to this. I thought that might look really pretty. So I'm going to swatch with that, but I'm not sure that it's quite as, um, you know, it's contrasty, but I, I think that it's really, the shawl is really pretty as a, with the two solid colors. So I'm, I mean, so speaking of solid colors in my worsted weight stash, <laughs> I have rainbow, um, which is not a solid color, but it would be less crazy than the crazy. So I'm going to also, even though this is worsted, I'm also going to swatch with that and see how it comes out. Because um, the idea is to use stash, right? Right? So the thing is, I had some more crazy, but it's, I don't like those colors. I mean, I do, but not with this. So the idea is to use stash. So, oh, by the way, I bought some yarn online the other day <laughs> that I haven't told anybody about yet. And I don't have it yet, um, but it's a beautiful silk mohair blend um, that's a DK weight, which is really close to a sport weight. So I think I'm going to wait and see when that comes. It might be perfect. So it'll be a little fuzzy and a little shiny. 
and I bought one of each of the 11 colors. Uh, so much for the yarn diet and using stash, but I think one of them will go beautifully with this, so I'll swatch that. I might just swatch that and not the other two. And I do I feel guilty for buying the yarn? No. You know why? <laughs> because um, Cornelia Tuttle Hamilton, who's whose slipstream shawl was the inspiration for the Starsky sweater that I was talking about at the beginning, um, is going to streamline her business and she's divesting, is that what you call it? The yarn, the yarn side, and she's going to focus on the design side. Excuse me. So she, um, she had emailed me and mentioned that and said that she will be selling all of her yarn at half off, 50% off, and that I'm allowed to tell people. So after I bought all the yarn I wanted, now I'm telling you. <laughs> so I will put this in the notes, um, but I'll also put it here. It's, um, I think it's Hamilton Yarn. Let me, eh, let me look it up. I think it's HamiltonYarns.com. I should have had it figured out beforehand. Oop, it is. Um, that's the website. Live stream, come back, please. Thank you. So that's the website. And then the coupon code you put in as you're ordering, which I have already done, did I mention, is it's capital thank you, all one word. Um, I think it's all one word. <laughs> and when you type that in and hit apply coupon, it'll knock half of the price off. Um, I'm sorry your sound keeps cutting out. I hope it's nothing on my end. I was having a little bit of an issue. Um, so I just restarted my computer, which was a little weird. Um, so hopefully it's, well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I bought more yarn and it's on its way. And I'm thinking that it might work with the, oh, maybe two of those colors together. But I only bought one skein of each. What was the yardage? So I might have to go back and order a second skein. So I'm not doing very well at the stash, but, um, it's okay. It's okay. It's all okay. So that's four projects, although I haven't swatched for the one. So it's three projects, although one's waiting for the next class session. So really, it's just two projects. So there you go. I can justify anything. Whew! So I talked about that, and 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 I talked about that. That's a lot of things. Um, the um, poll, I, I had asked for help with... Um, I want to start writing my patterns up that I've been not writing for the last 20 years. And I had a, what was that? Oh, she's rolling over onto a bag. Um, I announced that the winner of the poll last, last Monday, a week ago, I announced the winner of the poll, but then I found out which was category B as opposed to category A and which turned out to be baby sweaters. I have some baby sweaters to, to write up some patterns. And then what I didn't know was that you're supposed to turn off the poll. <laughs> so people kept voting. And um, by the time I was able to turn off that I knew how to turn off the poll, um, category A had won. <laughs> and category A was entrelock. And I was like, well, crap, now what do I do? So I'm going to um, alternate. I'll do all of them. I'll alternate between baby sweaters and entrelock and get at least three or four patterns out there before I ask again. And next time I won't do category A and category B because that seemed kind of rude um, to not let you know what you were voting on. So that's just following up with that. Um, I shot myself in the foot with that, which maybe isn't a good thing to say anymore. Uh, other things I want to mention um, before I get to the meat of today, half an hour in, I took a class um, with Jesse from Seams, the fabric shop next to... Um, the shop where I work, which the name is escaping me at the moment, Unvisible Mending uh, yesterday. I think it was last night, as a matter of fact. And I took it back in the day when we could meet in person. And this is what I had done then. I had, um, she talked about satin stitch and she talked about French knots and she talked about running stitch, which you can't really see, and back stitch. And she talked about buttonhole stitch. And I was so afraid to do anything. I just sort of did the thing she said. And then I just stopped and waited for the next thing. 
and I was just afraid to r ruin it. I didn't know what to do. And then last night I was like all over the place, which, um, so we again went over running stitch, but I just made a little, you know, we we're, were, she was kind of tying it into, um, a Sashiko inspiration. So this is a little bit of, you know, just running stitch. And then I did some back stitch in the orange and I did a loop-de-loo and then we did chain stitch and I just ran right over my loop-de-loo. And then I cut a hole in the piece of denim that wasn't already there. And I put a piece of um, really thin um, batik cotton behind it. It wouldn't make a good patch, but for the practice thing, it was pretty fun. And then more back and forth running stitch to make sure the patch stayed on. And I was going to town and having a really good time. So here's my, here's my takeaway from that. Not happy, Sarah, happy, Sarah. <laughs> so I think I'm, I think this is a nice, um, statement piece of um i'm relaxing and uh happy to try new things so that's i just wanted to share that with you <laughs> um there you go so yay yay for sarah um and then did i buy even more yarn why yes i did my thank you for asking um my friend, well, it doesn't matter who, because um, my friend Myra, but also like half of Facebook has suggested that we purchase um, PDF files from Ukrainian designers to help get them some money directly. And um, so the other night I spent some time in Ravelry on the front page of Ravelry. Right now you can find a list um, sorted by country of origin for the designers. And so I went in on, and they have it sorted by Ukrainian right off the bat. So I went in there and there's 72 pages of designs and there's like, I don't know, a dozen on each page or so. So, you know, I started looking through and I got through about six pages and I had ordered, I don't know, some things, <laughs> some sweaters, some crochet and some knitting um, patterns. And I got I mean, you know, the point is to buy the things, not really to make the things, but I was able to find a lot of things I wanted to make. And one of them is, um, it's, it's a high collar sweater. It's a pullover. It has mistake rib as the background stitch. And then it has some cables. Um, I'll find the name. It's called, it's not Narnia, but it's got the letters of Narnia and there's a J in there and maybe another N. I don't know. Um, and it uses, uh, Cascade Yarns Echo Ecological Wool or the Echo Plus, which is the dyed version. And, you know, I work in a yarn shop and we sell that yarn. So I bought the yarn. And so, yep. So that was exciting. It's very soft. Um, it's just wool, right? 100% Peruvian Highland Wool Cascade. Um, I've wound one up already, so I'm ready to swatch. <laughs> that would um, you know, that's how, that's how things go. And then the next night, so I recommend that if you're, you know, doing some late night shopping, you go into Ravelry and check out some of the PDFs. And, um, the point is the digital downloads, they don't have to do anything. They can't pack an order. So, um, the Ukrainian designers. So the next day I went to Etsy and, um, sorted by Ukrainian designers. And I don't know how many pages there were there, but I managed to um, support quite a few designers there. And I got um, crochet patterns, Irish crochet, knitting, recipes, and a cross stitch chart. Yep. And uh, it was fun shopping, let me tell you. And I also, I, I got one crocheted shawl from a Polish designer that came up um, because, you know, Poland is accepting a lot of the many, many, many of the Ukrainian, um, what do we call them refugees? And it was a crocheted shawl. And I, so I got all the things and then I had all the emails to download all the files and I downloaded all the files and the Polish one was in Polish. I was like, Oh crap. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but it's a crocheted shawl. It, all the crochet patterns I got used charts. The symbols are exactly the same as what I'm used to. Um, there's a little bit of verbiage uh, that is in Polish. And I picked that out and I put it in Google Translate and it 
looks like it translated beautifully because I totally understand what they're talking about. Um, and then I scrolled down and found mostly, uh, most of the, in there was actually some English translation on there, but it was like, whoopsie, <laughs> I don't speak Polish. Um, but it's a beautiful crocheted shawl. So I will, um, you'll see me hopefully working on those because they were, they were pretty fun to shop. Um, you know, I felt like I had done something. Um, and that brings us to <laughs> the main part of our program, which isn't a big deal, but it's, it's work. So um, you ready? I'm taking a weaving class. It starts April 2nd, which I'm pretty sure is this coming weekend. So I'm supposed to have a rigid heddle loom and yarn and some odds and ends. Okay, Diane, she's having sound issues. Um, so a long time ago, and from my looking at my Wayback machine, it looks like it might have been in 2009, I purchased a rigid heddle loom. And it is right here. It has, and then I took a class. Oops. And then um, I finished some scarves. And then I took the class again and didn't finish any scarves. And it is still warped from that class. We're going to just remove this warp because I'm not going to make the thing and I need it next weekend. So um, here's the rigid heddle loom. It's a shacked uh, flip and it's a 20 inch and it's very dusty because it's just been leaning up against a wall in the um, basement. So I have a tissue and I'm wiping off some of it. And then Hey, yay, yay, Diane. Um, and I have some yarn on this um, shuttle. I've, so you're supposed to have all these things for the class. And I'm like, I don't know, do I have the things? So let's see what you're supposed to have. I don't have that open either. Whoops. Mm -hmm. That's how it's going. Plus, and it's um, a stitches. I'm taking the class with Deborah Jarko and it's, I don't know what it's called, but it's, um, I'll tell you in a second, actually. Events, April, class information, teachers, let's go with that. It's thinking about letting me in, there we go. Jarko, boop, 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 boop. There she is, view my classes. Uh, it'd be nice if I'd had this lined up already. Are we viewing my class? Yep. We have a tote bag to learn the rigid heddle loom. So that's what I'm taking. It's three two hour sessions. She's going to make us, she's going to show us how to warp the loom. And then we're going to start weaving. And then it's the two weekend events. So between the first weekend and the second weekend, we have to finish weaving the first piece, cut it off the loom, rewarp the loom. And I'm like, I don't want to, but that's why I'm taking the class. <laughs> so just do it, Sarah. So if I click on the thing about the class, I'm at stitches.events. I'll put it in the thing. Um, yeah, it starts April 2nd. Oh, there's two classes on April 2nd. Okay. And supply list, rigid head loom with at least 10 inches of weaving width. I have 20. And a 10 DPI read. Well, I happen to know that the one I have is 12. So I purchased... 10. So now I have two reads. I don't even know how to. That's all discolored. I guess that's probably okay. I could probably wash it. I wonder what that's discolored with. I don't know. Um, a measuring tape, not on me, but I definitely have a measuring tape. 12 by one and a half piece of light colored cardboard or manila file folder. So I have manila file folders. I'll have to find one and I suppose cut it down to one and a half inches. About 10 to 15 yards of waste yarn, worsted weight acrylic works best. I think I can find some of that. Tapestry needle, got one. Scissors, straight pins, cardboard tube from inside a paper towel roll. Now I just finished the toilet paper roll, but that's not a, a, a paper towel roll. So I'll have to go through some paper towels, I guess, before next weekend. Two brown paper grocery bags, shouldn't be a problem. 
shuttle. Here, let's, um, this yarn I can save. So I'll just unwind this in a little bit because um, that's going to be really boring. Sewing needle and sewing thread to match your yarn. Well, I don't even have the yarn picked out yet, but you're going to help me with that in just a second. Warping peg. So, and clamps on a sleigh hook. Got those. They came with the loom, I guess, because I already had them. Two rubber bands. I actually do not have any rubber bands. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm... I'm not afraid of them, but they give me the oogies and I always cut them up and throw them away. So I must have had a traumatic rubber band experience when I was little. And then 600 yards of DK or sock weight yarn can be 300 yards each of two colors. So you're going to help me pick that out. But first, I don't know how to get, I mean, I think I just have to cut this off. Plus I have this, which I don't know if it's related to the loom. And I also found this, but this is plastic, and I'm pretty sure that's not related to the loom, but I don't know what they are, but they were leaning on the wall with it. So I have, oh, there's my new read. Um, I'm just going to cut it off. You can scream if you want to. There I go. I'm cutting it off. So this yarn, I found a label. The label says Misty Alpaca Tonos Carnival. Silk, sorry, 50% <laughs> alpaca, 30% merino wool, 10% silk, and 10% nylon. And I have this and this. Oh, and this one has a label in it. Okay, so that must be this one. What did I say? Alpaca, wool, silk, and nylon. And then um, it's called surf blue, so that must be this one. And then I have, and that was what I have on the shuttle for the weft. And then on the warp, it was, uh, that I just cut. It's um, Prism Yarns, Prism Yarns, um, which way is up? Saki, which must be a sock yarn, right? In the color Savoy. So now it's not warped. Well, it is, but I'm just going to. Cut it off and take my reed out and put it on top of the other one. Wow. I wonder if you can wash this. And then, I don't know, this is all, you're helping me get ready, right? Here we go. Well, look, now I don't need the paper bag because I already have one. Uh, oh, that's all. Ah. And then this, oh wait, here's more. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Keep calling you, Sarah. There you go. There's there's the second paper bag. So that's done. And what do I do here? I don't know. Are they tied? Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have to cut all those. No, that one's tied. Okay, hold on. Thanks for helping me. Okay, and then what? Oh, that's really long, isn't it? Because that was all. Where is it all? Holy crap. Okay, let's figure it out. I'm going to cut down here. I'm not even, I wanted to try to save the yarn, but I'm not even going to try to save the yarn. Can I get it off, like, while we're talking now, so to speak? I'm just going to keep cutting away. Maybe I can cut away this way so you can see. It's just this big pile of yarn now. I'm not happy about it, but we're just going to move on to bigger and better things. <laughs> Claire is like, what the heck are you doing, Mom? Cutting all that yarn. I don't even think I can cut all of it. There you go. Hey, look, now it looks like I'm playing a harp. <gasps> there we go. So that's um, most of the warp. We still have this little bit. 
Clara, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's getting close to dinner time. AKA time to park. Ooh. So I have this hangy thing with um, the Warham knots. So that's what I need to undo. Um, so that's what I have. Okay, I'm going to see how fast it goes. Oh, pretty fast. Actually. Oh, or I could just, oh, I can't slide them all off because there's the white stuff there. Okay, so the last thing, see, that doesn't take too long. It's just sad. The last, I can just take them off. The last thing is um, picking out, picking out yarn. There we go. And I have my, um, it said fingering weight or DK. And I pulled my finger away. Oh, probably I could make something out of these. <laughs> yes. It's been on here since like 2011, Diane. That's kind of a long time. I do still have this. I also have an apple. Anybody hungry? It goes there. These go here with the leaves and the paper. See, now I don't have to find paper bags. Those are like 20-year-old paper bags. What's going on here? Oh, that goes back in there. Oh, boy. You know, something fell off. <laughs> uh, hold on. Everybody, hold on. Just hang on. Let me put that back in. One more. Okay. Perhaps that shouldn't have fallen out. Okay. And then there's another one. I don't even know. So that's undressed. Is that what we call it? Dressing the loom and undressing the loom? And I have everything except, I don't know, little things to look for. I don't think these are anything to do with the loom. And then um, I need... We're almost done. See how it's going to take less than an hour? 600 yards um, DK or sock weight. And I already don't have a lot of DK. Um, can be 300 yards each of two different colors. So I pulled out my, I don't know, million boxes. Oh, there's a lot of um, <laughs> sock yarn it's sorted by color. And we can just sort of see real quick what I've got that I need 300 yards of each. And I've got some pretty, um, like I've got beautiful koi goo, which, you know, I am saving it for something, but I don't know what. Yeah, it's a 20 inch. They come in. The Cricut, I think, is 10, and then the flips come in. 25 is a bigger one. 20s medium there's another size uh i bought it when i got when i took my class a long time ago i'm looking for yardage on this tag and i'm also not wearing the right glasses 175 so two of them are 350 which is i mean i have so koi goo Why not fibers in a beautiful, see, I, I have, I have a box of greens that are really pretty. So I have enough of this, enough of either of these. Um, okay. I'm putting them on the desk because that's helpful. I'm not going to be able to get out of my seat later. That's probably okay. I can just sit here and knit all the things. And then I have blue and blue. I had collected koi goo for something that um, I decided not to make. That's a hand spun from uh, a friend, Susie, Susie. Crap, can't remember her last name. It's merino and cashmere. So perhaps, I don't know, that's a pretty one. I'm just laying them all out in front of me. 
The perfect one will make itself known, but in the meantime, they can all sit on my desk. Ooh, oh, that's for something else. But I have this beautiful hank of um, Madeline Tosh in cactus flower. I have a shawl that I want to make with that. Do I have, ooh. Hmm. So this is pretty. This was some yarn I got in a goodie bag, but I think that um, this is a singles and I think I want to use applied yarn. So that's not happening. How much yardage is that? 425, so that would work. It's like, I don't know. Or maybe I could use the Madeline Tosh. These are fingering weight. And then I have more yellow for some reason. See, maybe I should use that. And this is a brown. Maybe I should use these because I don't really like them. <laughs> I mean, they're just not my favorite colors. The yellow goes was part of the whole thing. This is Misty Alpaca. Oh, guess what? It's that same yarn that I just cut off. Um, and how many yards? Uh, 437, so that's definitely more than 300. And I, those are not plied, and that's for something else. You can't see. Oh, you may, no, you can't see. Can you see? It's really pretty over here. Two more boxes. Ooh, blues. More koi goo. I'm just going to keep those out and put them in like a vase. Oh, that's something else. Ooh, no. Hmm. This is something else, but I'm going to... Hmm, that's something else. <gasps> I gasped and choked myself. I have some sock yarn that would be a good idea, maybe for the warp. 459 yards. That might be a good idea for the warp. Ooh, thanks, Fran. Hey. was weird. I found some knitting needles. Apparently I was going to make a pair of socks. This would be a good idea to use because it's stock yarn so it's sturdy. I would love to have a pair of socks. I would love to have all of this stuff knitted up. And then what else do I have in this? Ooh, more of the more of the that. Maybe I should just put this stuff away right now. Yep, more of the that. So where was that tag? Look, I'm putting yarn away. Um... That's too soft. Oh, some pretty Noro sock. Um, there more of this? No, that's too soft. I already said that. Okay, one more box. I think it. I think that one, the sock yarny sock yarn, will be a good choice. Last box. Oh, box. Ooh, Claire is excited that it's the last box. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. This is the purple box. Whoa. I'm not going to use the twisted fiber art. That's unplied. Look how pretty. Ooh. Oh, I have two of them twisted, apparently. That's something. Whoa. Whoa. That's really pretty. I wonder what that is. That's Whoa. too soft. I'm not excited Whoa. about that. Whoa. Whoa. Too soft. Whoa. I wonder if I put these together. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, this is one of them. Maybe I'll use this one. That would be pretty. I don't really need a bag. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, that was all the fingering weight. Is that true? That's the fingering weight stash, you guys. So I'm not going to use all the koi goo, but look how pretty this is. Is it all in one place? Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm not going to use all the koi goo, but look how pretty that is. That's going to be something all by itself. Bye. Um, this was hand spun. I don't want to use that. I want to use this. It's pretty soft. I do have plucky knitter, but that's a weird combination. I do have the, um, that might work. 
I think this was going to go with this, actually. I think these were going to go with the Koigu, actually. I'm making a big old pile of yarn right there. Oh, and this was something else. Which leaves... I don't know. What do you think? Any thoughts? Ooh, that would be pretty, but I think this for sure. Do we think that would look the least bit interesting? I know, Claire Bobera. You're next. You're next. Well, stay tuned because I will already have started weaving the thing the next time I see you. This might be interesting. I don't know. This will be the warp. That's what I know. These won't be used... This feels like it's too nice to use, but that might be pretty. I'll just leave these all out. I'll ask Deborah. Uh oh, I'm clicking something. Fran says, I'll probably choose my least favorite color since this will be my first attempt at weaving, and I'm pretty sure there will be a learning curve. That's a good thought, which is why just a plain old sock yarn, I think. Um, you know, it's sold as a sock yarn to make socks out of. Uh, it's got the nylon in it. So I think that'll be good for warp. And, and then I just don't really want to use up any of my lovelies <laughs> for the weft. Um, but I'm not fond of this. But I don't know what they would look like. But you know what? Maybe that's what I'll do. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. These go. Whoops. Well, now there's yarn everywhere because that pile fell over. And that's okay. Um, so stay tuned because I will... Um, have done something by then. <laughs> so I don't know. I also have the directions from when I learned to weave last time. Maybe I'll read those. Here's my scissors. Here's my pen. And that's it. I am done. Uh, I didn't decide my yarn colors, which was really the whole purple. Well, deciding the yarn colors and getting the old warp off the loom because I really didn't want to do that. But that's done. Got one of my colors picked out. Or I could go see what I have in the DK world maybe do that. All right. You'll find out next year. Um, Diane agrees that maybe not my favorite yarn, which I agree also. So I'll see you guys next week. Uh, and this will be live tonight at some point. I have to go eat first and feed the dog who's right there. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for joining me.